All right. Before our test, before we had this, this fun exam that we just did, we were talking about something called the addition rule. And what the addition rule said is if you want to find the probability of something, one event, or another thing, another event occurring, that or word, we had to use the addition rule. And basically what we do is we add the probability of the first event plus the probability of the second event and then subtract this thing. And what was this thing? That's the double count, that's right. Or in other words, this is the probability of event A and event B occurring in the same trial, the same trial right there. That same is the key word. So this right here, I'm, I'm making a clear point because I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something that looks similar to this and you have to know the difference between them, okay? So right here, this means both at the same time. Or in other words, this is during a single trial. Both at the same time during a single trial. You see, right now we're going to get into section 4.4 and we're going to talk about something called the multiplication rule. And we're going to have another word and in just a bit. And I need you to know that there's a difference between the and I'm going to tell you in a minute and the and that we have from the addition rule. Here's why I made such a big stink about this not literal stink, like a figurative stink. Like, you know. I didn't make a stink. Um, <laughs> I came out weird too. So, <laughs> we have this and, which means at the same time in one trial. This and, for a multiplication rule, this means something different. And people get very confused about this because in English we use and and and, right? I mean, we have this word twice. Here, when we're talking about the addition rule and we're saying probability of A or B, what we mean is the probability of A happening or B happening, or they both happen at the same time. Nod your head with me if you're with that. Okay. With the multiplication rule, the probability of A and B, what we mean in this instance, if you just say to see probability of A and B, it's not in here or anything, what this means is I want you to find the probability of event A happening and then event B happening right after it. Does that make sense? Two different things. This is A and B at the same time. This right here, when we're talking about multiplication rule, says I want you to find the probability of A happening and then after that B happening. So for instance, what's the probability that you take a dice out and you roll a five and then a three? Is that possible to do? Can you take a dice and then roll a five and then pick it up and then roll a three? That's what we're finding the probability of here. In this case, it was, what's the probability of rolling a 5 or a 3? If you do one roll, they can't happen at the same time. But if you do successive rolls, you could roll a 5, then pick up the die, and then roll a 3. Do you see the difference in these two things? So while this and meant both at the same time during a single trial when you're talking about A or B, this and means the probability of A happening and then B happening in successive trials. Well, I talked so long, my pen went dry. That's weird. <laughs> and the key phrase is, and then. Not and at the same time. And then. Be occurring. in successive events, or six, I'm sorry, in successive trials. That, that word uh, successive, what's that mean, by the way? So right after, that's right, so right after each other. Would you raise your hand if you feel comfortable with the difference between the ants? 
So while we have two ands, they mean two different things. Same, same word, two different things. When you're talking about the context of an or problem, the and means at the same time. When you're talking about the context of an and problem, that's multiplication rule, those, uh, those trials are one right after another. It's A and then B happen. To kind of illustrate the, the multiplication rule, let's say I give you a test. Ready for a test? It's going to be a fun test. We just had one. I'm a tough teacher, guys. There's only two questions on this test. Only two questions on this test. Question number one is a true or false question. And the question is, true or false, Mr. Leonard drives an Audi. <laughs> Ooh, fancy. <laughs> Does anyone know the answer to that question? False. <laughs> <laughs> All right, stalkers, whatever. How do you know? Thank goodness. The next question is multiple choice. <laughs> Someone in my other class asked, Mr. Leonard, were you following me on the freeway? I, Natural response was, well, I have no idea. It's not like they follow you around. And they said, oh, well, do you drive a Prius? I was like, well, no, I don't drive a Prius. I said, wait, do I look like I drive a Prius? The, the whole class was like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> then I looked in the mirror and, yeah, I kind of look like I drive a Prius. <laughs> I don't drive. And my favorite color is, this is Mr. Leonard's favorite color. Let's see, you have a choice. Does anyone know the answer to this question? Black. Yeah, I do. Stalkers. Because <laughs> <laughs> your car is black. Because <laughs> hmm? your car is black. Yellow. My, my car is actually very dark blue. My other car is black. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's just pretend that. Adriana doesn't know everything about it. <laughs> <laughs> we don't. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, let's pretend you didn't know the answer to these questions, okay? Because I just made these up randomly. But let's say that you didn't know whether or not I drove an Audi, and you didn't know what my favorite color is, and you're going to take a random guess at this. What I want to know is if you guess randomly, what's your probability you're going to find the right answer? We're going to discover that, and that's going to lead us into, we're starting with the easy example, that'll lead us into the multiplication rule. So if you guess randomly, which most of you are going to have to do because you don't really know anything about me. Thankfully. <laughs> if you guess randomly, what's the probability you will get the right answer on both questions? Now, I want you to notice that we are not in the addition rule any longer. I'm not asking, what's the probability of you getting either this one right or this one wrong? I'm not asking that. Or this one right or wrong? I'm not asking that. What I'm asking is, find the probability that you're going to get this one right, and then you're going to get this You're going to answer this one too, right? Find the probability you're going to get this one right, and then you're going to get this one right. Notice how we're talking about successive events, one right after another. An event would be answering the question. 
So you're going to answer this one, then you're going to answer another question. That's this one. That right there tells you that we are in an and type of probability. We want the first one right and the second one right. Now your head if you're clear on that. Good. All right. What needs to happen for us to get both answers right? Well, you've got to answer the first one right, and then you've got to answer the second one right. How many choices do we have to choose from? How many choices do you have for the first one? Yeah, because you could do either true or false. You could do either true or false. Now, if you pick true, does it determine what you're going to pick for this answer? No. So you could pick true and then pick A, couldn't you? Mm -hmm. Or true and then B, true and then C, true and then D, true and then E. That gives you, for each T, A, B, C, D, and E to choose from. Now what if you choose false? Could you choose false and then choose A? False B, false C. It gives you the same Gives you, it gives you the same five choices for choosing false as well. Let's talk about our sample space for our, our choices here. Remember, sample space was everything that you could happen from your procedure. If our procedure is answering these two questions randomly, one right after the other, I'm just going to list it out because I wanted to kind of go over sample space again. Then our sample space is true and then A. That's one that we could get. We could get true and then B. That's another one. True and C. And so forth. Would you agree that this is everything that starts with a T? Notice how we're kind of going along the same idea as our the boy-girl thing that we did? The three boys, or two boys, one girl. Here's all our, our true, true comma, multiple choice answers, and our false ones look almost identical, it's just instead of the T's, we'll have an F. Okay, here's the question. How many right answers are there up there? How many correct answers? Two correct answers? This can only be answered correctly one way, right? I don't have more than one favorite color. This can only be answered one way, one way as well. So together, there's only one way you can answer this correctly. One of these choices is correct. In fact, it's uh, it's this one. That's the correct answer right there. So if that's the correct answer, how many total choices do you have? You didn't know that, did you? You all thought, oh, DJ. It's an old Audi, but still an Audi. <laughs> How many total choices did you have to choose from? There's ten ways you can answer the question, only one of them is right, so that's a one in ten chance you're going to get both of these things correct. So the probability of getting both right is the probability that you're going to randomly select true and that you're going to randomly select D. That's Half a chance? Oh, not half a chance, you have a chance. 50% chance for the top one and a 20% chance for the bottom one. Is there a way that we can kind of come up with a better way to do this and just sit, listen to sample space and answers? Yeah, we're going to cover it in just a bit. Before we do that, I want to give you one more example, though. The other example is going to go back to your guilty, not guilty table. 